welcome. I am so excited to have the lovely and talented Dr. Sharon Meyer with us today. Thank you so much for making time for us. Yes. For sure. So I just want to give a real brief overview. So uh, Dr. Sharon Meyer is at Sonova Dermatology Uptown uh, in Louisiana, and she has been practicing a, a board certified dermatologist for over 30 years. So we're so excited to have her here with us today to kind of share some little pearls of wisdom and kind of tell us how we can look our best. So let's see here. So tell us, uh, Dr. Meyer, you see here this uh, difference between these two faces. Tell me a little bit about the aging face. Well, the way I tell patients is that when we're young, um, the idea of beauty is uh, an inverted triangle. They have um, full cheeks, their mid face is full, they have a well-defined jawline. And unfortunately, as we age, the triangle kind of flips a little bit. We get a little heavy down here, we get flat here. And it's these shadows that develop that we don't like, that makes us look older. We have some bony loss, we lose some collagen and um, elastin. So, and we, yeah, so that's a good picture of, um, of with the muscles and where, oh, and also to the right, they're showing some, um, some um, fat spaces, they call them, and they um, and those change too. Yeah, it looks like they kind of fall apart from each other almost, and then that like that firm scaffolding kind of isn't there the way that it was before. Yes. Well, and then kind of tell us about this. So this is kind of like a side by side of a woman in her twenties, which is the daughter, and a woman in her sixties, which is the mother, and kind of like their pre and post having some cosmetic procedures. So with the younger girl, it, you know, she has a well-defined jawline to begin with. Oh, and just let me say, this is a, a Juvederm, but just think of it as any hyaluronic acid, you could get these same results with RHA products or with the Restylane family. So it's not that I am pushing a certain line. I feel comfortable with all of them. I have all of them in my office. So that, let me just say that first. Um, so with the young girl, she already has a well-defined jawline, so she doesn't need any work there. In contrast to the aging mom, you can see she's got those little jowls right here. Um, and, and by the way, let me just say, <laughs> I'm 61, <laughs> so I'm laughing. He said over 30 years. We want to make sure it doesn't sound like I've been practicing for 40 years. Anyway, I've been practicing since I was 31, so I've been 30 years. So I've been through all this before. You know, I've been doing fillers uh, on people and getting myself since I was in my 30s. So. Um, and as I've aged, I've become fonder and fonder of products that help me in my age group. And as my patients age with me and see me and how my face is looking, um, they ask me what I recommend and I tell them what I've done on myself. So that's a short little um, talk on myself. Anyway, um, okay, so let's see. And you can tell, I, I don't have a little pointer, but you can tell with the young girl, I know she's had a little bit under her eyes. They call that the... Um, tear trough area, you can also build that up by going into this mid face right here. And it looks like the corner of her lip has been upturned a little bit. And those are the main things I see with her. Okay. And with the older woman, you just have to frankly use more product. Um, I don't see here how much, it doesn't say how much product was used, but you got to work on the jawline a little bit. This is called the this is the jowl. So they get the pre-jowl sulcus, the post-jowl sulcus. You can put a little bit in front of the jowl, a little bit in the back of the jowl. You got to put something here to lift. She's got uh, lines above her lip. They probably put something right there. Um, they didn't focus on making her lips bigger per se, just the whole perioral area better. And they definitely um, have some of this mid-face area and went up into her, um, so I go into her cheeks. Well, I love it because it's kind of like how you can capture how utilizing a variety of products from a variety of lines are able to kind of help you combine these powers to kind of offer an overall rejuvenation, which is the goal is to kind of look like maybe you had something done, but I'm not sure, but you look super rested and you look very youthful. And I know that that's our goal. Um, but mm -hmm. I know... Yeah, Can go I ahead. One thing? If you go back, the, they had a lot of Juvederm products up there. They have Voluma and they had Ultra, you know, like, for example, you don't put Voluma right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, these people need more than one tube anyway, but it's kind of, it's definitely hard to make 
somebody, if you, if you, if you do all these areas, you can't do it all one too, because there's certain places that a certain product works better than others. And you don't want to compromise that. For sure, and for sure. you should just look rested. That's right. And just better. And people know you look better. They don't know why you don't look different. Her smile doesn't look that different. Her eyes don't look different in either person. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It's, we want natural results, just more rested. So I, I hear a little birdie tells me that Sculptra is one of your favorite procedures, one of your favorite products to use. So tell us a little bit about Sculptra. So let me tell you the history of Sculptra a little bit. It was, um, it was approved by the, by the FDA in 2004 for um, HIV patients that tended to be a little gaunt with the medicines they were using. But we, we figured out that uh, we knew it was good for the aging phase also. You would just put two, two vials at one time in an HIV patient. You would put one vial in an aging phase. And once the FDA approves um, a product for something, we are allowed to use it in other things. And so it finally did get approved for the aging phase later. But I have personally been injecting um, sculpture in pe people's faces since um, Katrina, I believe, it was 2005, right? So it was about that time. So I was on the bandwagon right, right away, but I didn't become a huge fan of it until probably I was um, probably 15 years ago, you know, 45, 50, when I started aging and trying to figure out what was right for my face. And sculpture is an investment, okay? Like it is not a one bottle thing. The bottles, um, they're about 850. It's different areas of the country or different prices. Some are 750, some are 1,000, but let's say 850. And there's discounts, you know, but, um, but you need to get multiple bo bottles. They say a bottle per decade of life. Let's say if a 60 year old, I'm probably, I can usually do less, like maybe four bottles spread out over time, but it's an investment. And until I got it myself, I was a little, I don't want to use, I was a little hesitant to talk to these ladies that have followed me for 20 years that really trusted me to make that investment, you know? Um, but I believe, but after a while, after seeing what it did for me and what it did for some patients, now I can confidently talk about it. Um, it's a lot cheaper than a facelift. They've called this the liquid facelift. Um, facelifts in New Orleans for the eyes and face is about $20,000. So, um, but just think that you got about, you know, maybe four grand invested in this. It looks it'll look really natural and then you need a bottle of a year to maintain so about 850 a year to maintain well, that's last, not, yeah that's not bad year, at all you don't want to go all the way down you don't want the tank to become totally empty for sure because you're it's 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 kind of a, a process and something that's super important and and one of the things we like to talk about the most is making sure that you come in to meet with your provider um uh, to decide what direction you want to go. I know something that we kind of talked about was if you had something like a wedding coming up, you may not necessarily want to go the sculpture route because sculpture is more of a long-term investment, whereas you might have another option, but we'll get there in just a moment. I kind of uh, got ahead of myself, but tell us a little bit. You said it kind of adds uh, that volume loss and kind of restores. So tell us a little bit about what you see here. Well, like I can almost take my finger and know exactly where they went, but um, let me just, he, some sound bites that Sultra, Sculpture Company uses, which For is, sure. uh, let me see if I can find they, um Well, I know they went underneath her eyes and here, and um, the, the, the main thing you focus here, the fuller you get in here and over here and it lifts your jawline. And, and remember I said you get that inverted triangle, mm -hmm. the more you put up here, the less it looks down here. <laughs> so um, sure, because it kind of restores that scaffolding I was chatting about with uh, earlier. It's like you're kind of restoring the structure to which your face is built upon, which would then allow you to kind of have that tr that inverted triangle. When you have the volume back in the right areas, your face becomes um, more luminescent. Is the way it's been described. The um, sh yeah. the uh, light bounces off your face in a nice way. Um, I I will say um, so. These six files total. You, not, you definitely can't inject it closer than four weeks apart. You can do two vials at a time to get started, but then after that, I usually go one vial, one vial. You have to spread it out. I like to spread it out at least six weeks. Some people say eight weeks. In the literature, it'll say four weeks, but longer is, is even better because it's, it's um, treat, wait, assess. Treat, wait, and then look to see how much you need. Um, you'll look better like six, eight, nine months later. I mean, so you can come to me and say, hey, my daughter's getting married in a year. But if you say my daughter is getting married in two months, uh, it's just not enough time to start this drug, this you know product. Uh, yeah, definitely. And then we've got another patient here. Um, that... This patient, you can tell she's um, it's more subtle. 
She's only used two vials, so this is not a huge investment. But look how much better she looks. Just under her eyes look better, you know? Yeah, um, she definitely seems to have like a glow, like you said, the sculpture glow. Mm -hmm. And her nasal labial folds look to be a little less harsh, which I feel like is really a nice look. And you know how they do that? It's not even necessarily always putting a lot in the nasal labial fold. When you put it here, it pulls that up. I love that. I love that. I just think it's such a, a nice and like you said, a subtle difference that makes her look so much more rejuvenated and rested. Um, and here is a before and after from one of our partner clinics in Houston, Texas. Um, can you tell us what kind of what you're seeing here? Um, well, I always look under the eyes and mid face. That's where everybody goes first and you can tell where she's had it there. Um, around her mouth looks better. So I don't know if they grab an HJ also because most people don't put sculpture right here unless you do it super, super dilute. Um, as you can tell, she still has little jowls and these folds right here, but that's okay. It's not gonna be perfect. Um, I don't know how old this person is. It's saying anywhere, but Overall, she just looks so much healthier. She just she does. She looks you know. healthier. She looks more uh, rejuvenated. Mm -hmm. And then here we've got another patient who's had four vials, and it says they were in the temples, the cheeks, and the chin. So the temples, um, as we age, our temples become more indented or con um, cave. And you don't want your temples necessarily to poke out, but you don't want them to be too indented. If you go into a head to I don't know if this is too graphic to visualize, but if you go into a nursing home and if there's a lot of thin people, you can, you definitely see how um, the temples go in. So we'd like to bring those out a little bit. Um, and what'd you say, your temples and where else? The cheeks and then the chin. Yeah, I can see she needed some right here, you know, so that mm -hmm. fills that out some. Yeah, so she had, um, yeah, four vials over time. She definitely looks like she turned back the clock and it kind of goes back to that thing we said where it's like, I'm not sure what you did, but you look great. Mm -hmm. So I just love how, like you mm -hmm. said, um, very luminous her skin looks and how it looks a little bit mm -hmm. more full. Um, and then this gentleman here um, had sculpture combined with some filler to kind of help fill in some of those lines. Sculpture does help acne scarring. Um, and I'm looking here, he's had some Juvederm Ultra also. But think about it, uh, if you volumize some, somebody, it's gonna plump up the scars also. You can go back and put some HA in, in there, but um, sculpture is good for acne scarring too. I love, it's just such a great photo, I think, to see the difference in, in how these cosmetic offerings can offer a natural, but very successful looking rejuvenation. And for this patient, I assume it probably wasn't even anti-aging per se, but more so just to kind of help with that scarring, which I think looks fantastic. I don't know. He's not, he's, he's not, uh, he's not super young. And, and you know, somebody, <laughs> sorry. And somebody uh, depending on age, they might even need two bottles a year to maintain if they have other issues like, like um, acne scarring or severely indented temples, but for sure, average, for sure. patient, about one bottle a year. And sometimes they forget and they come back in two years and they're like, why do I look so bad? And I'm like, well, you didn't come last year, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Your time, time, time is telling on you. Um, right. But we were, we talked a little bit about how sculpture is kind of more your long game and something that's supposed to help rejuvenate uh, over a long period of time. But we also have something uh, that, like you've mentioned multiple times, hyaluronic acid fillers that are able to kind of offer a little bit more of an immediate response and kind of help with either enhancing uh, specific areas of the face or with overall rejuvenation. Um, and just to show here, there's a couple of different things to take away from this, like um, the different areas like cheeks, uh, lines in the face and the lips, and then also to take uh, into consideration the amount of syringes or tubes as uh, Dr. Meyer says that these things can take. Um, because something that's super important to know is, is that uh, one size does not fit all. Um, and when we're talking about these amounts of syringes or tubes, um, it may sound a little bit overwhelming to you as a patient, but when you look at it here and see how much product it actually is, it, it, it's not as overwhelming. Um, but I'll let you speak to a little bit more since you're the one that's in the room doing the partnering with the patients. Well, if, I don't know if you want to go back to that other yeah, place. Yeah, for sure. See that lady in the middle, three syringes. I mean, that is three syringes just around the mouth. And 
Um, price for that is around $700, depending on your area of the country you live in, you know, anywhere from 650 to 1000 even. And so what is that? She's got, you know, over 2000 invested. So that's why I kind of equate that to the, the sculpture is not an expensive product when you look at the whole picture. But you can remember, you can't put sculpture in the lips. So if somebody needs um, something around the lips, you got to add that too. But anyway, um, so, and like I said before, you know, the rest of the lane family will do this. Our HA family it doesn't have to be these, but um, but a lot of times people come in and they say, "I want these done. I want my lips done." And then it's the doctor is supposed to say, "Well, I'm listening to you, but really, you need this to help this." You know, for sure, for sure. You were talking about kind of building that structure back with Sculptro or, or your other products that kind of offer more of a lift, and that lift kind of takes care of those other concerns that you may mm -hmm. notice. And and instead of kind of band-aiding the specific place, you can actually kind of create more of a a solution to the problem per se. And then, so let's talk a little bit about the cheeks here. Um, so we've kind of gone over this a little bit, but you said typically with, with your preferences to use Sculptra, but there is the ability to use HA fillers to kind of help with the cheek area. Yeah, and I don't want people to think I don't do the HA fillers. I just, the reason um, I have them all in my office, I feel com you know confident, confident and confident with all of them, but I get referrals for sculpture from other doctors that don't have, it is a steeper learning curve, I think, um, in a way to talk to patients about it also. And so I have gotten referrals from other doctors, other Sonova doctors even, that, that just don't feel comfortable with Sculptra, but they use other products. So um, yeah, but this, this person had an HA and she's trying to build up her cheeks area. Yeah, definitely. And just that little bit, um, I you should kind of be smiling afterwards, which is funny, but it, it definitely does kind of enhance the profile and make her seem a little more awake and alert, which is really nice. Um, and then this is an actual Sonova dermatology patient um, from in Texas, um, who looks to have treated her under eyes with Restylane. Love the uh, mask. Talk a little bit I mean, more about they, Is that a COVID mask? I mean, you wouldn't have that picture three years ago, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe she was chilly. Uh huh. Uh huh. True. All right. <laughs> this is actually that picture is something we see every day, and it's tough. It really is tough. Um, you know, some of the plastic surgeons here, even after somebody's had their eyes done, they they blame on allergies, the puffiness, and um, so we do what we can do. You know, but she's obviously better. Yeah, definitely. It definitely looks like she's had a couple extra nights of sleep, and some of us that's all we can ask for. Mm -hmm. um, and then one thing you mentioned earlier that is not really treatable with Sculptra um, is the lip area. So tell us a little bit more about treating the lips. Well, the first thing I look at in a woman over a certain age, and I was taught this by another dermatologist friend of mine in Baton Rouge, God, like eight years ago. And ever since she showed me this, this is what I go to first. I actually first thing I do is I take, I don't inject the lip, I go above the lip and I go horizontal here to build up that because you can see she's got all those vertical lip lines. But when I go horizontally, it builds up that whole area and it rolls the lip up a little bit without giving you that platypus look of putting too much in the lip and this being flat. So mm. I build that up first and then I do. And then you can also, after you've done that, then you can actually go up and down the lines. Definitely. And I love here that that with an HA filler, you're able to notice that her lips just look a little more, a little less deflated. Um, and she looks very, uh, uh, it looks moist. Like her lips look like they are rejuvenated and have kind of more, uh, I don't know. They just look very nice. Very Well, perfect. once again, too, this is a lot of filler in the lips itself. I just got to tell you, my, my tongue practice and maybe just my personality, the way I am, I tend to probably underfill. If somebody comes in and goes, I really want more than they can push me, but patients are always afraid of this. They're like, they're going to look done. And my staff goes, oh no, she will definitely not make you look done. Like I'd rather add more later than have somebody freaked out that they are too much. Like I, I can't even... I, I think in 10 years, maybe one per, I don't even know if I've ever put two mils in somebody's lip. I mean, one time when somebody was a singer and she had to have the CD cover and had to be really out there. So that is, I mean, I'm not saying it looks bad. I'm not saying it looks bad at all, but that's even a lot for me. 
you know? I love it. Well, and, and I think that's something that we really appreciate. And I think as, as Sonova Dermatology as a whole, we really do want to offer more of a natural look. Like if you do come in and say, well, we want, I want to look this way, then, then I appreciate that you would use your best judgment and say, you know, I think this is the best way to go. We don't want to overdo it. You're going to notice some swelling. And then after that, it'll calm down. And then we can maybe reassess after that, which, which you mentioned earlier with sculpture too. So I think that taking more natural approach is a really great option. Um, and then something else to chat about too, um, not to, to uh, forget about the neck area. We've talked a lot about the face is Kybella, which is kind of a different concept. So can you tell us a little bit more about Kybella? Yes, but let me back up and say one more thing about fillers in general. Yeah, for sure. Um, if somebody wanted to come in and say, talk to me about Sculptra, a lot of times we can do a talk and if I'm not behind, I'll do the first bottle right there. And so if you think that's a possibility, um, try not to take aspirin or Advil, anything that makes you bleed like that for two weeks prior. If you have a headache, just take Tylenol, then you're less likely to bruise. Um, that's about it. Because <laughs> some people want to, they, they, not everybody wants a consultation and leave and then come back, you know? Yeah, I love um, that. Got to be prepared. Uh, same thing about Kybella, really. And, and it depends on our schedule too, right? So, um, um, okay. So Kybella, there's, and I actually have pictures. I only have one. Okay, so patients want to go, do you have any pictures to show me? Well, for a patient to let me show their picture, obviously I have to get permission. And usually I give them something like a free something in order to do that. And sometimes there's different guidelines. They say, okay, you can show your patients, but I don't want it on social media. So I do have some pictures on my phone of uh, three different types of people with Kybella because there's really three different types of people. <laughs> One of them is the young person that is probably even in their twenties and genetically, unfortunately, they've inherited this, okay? They're not overweight, they just inherited that, all right? So I have a picture that's great with that person. And I think she used a bottle and a half. Another person is um, an overweight person, you know, um, and I have a picture of that, which is, I mean, they're still heavy, but it's obviously better. Um, and the last person is, we tend to get some double chin as we age, all right, but we also have some looseness. So I can make that better, but it's still going to be a little loose, but they're still happier. I've never, I've never done a Kybella patient that was unhappy, that's for sure. Um, they say the home run though is with that young person because they have no looseness afterwards. They, I mean, everybody's happy, but um, that boy, they're really happy. I mean, I just did a girl and she, luckily she started far enough in advance. She was getting married and I did all this before she got married. She's just so thrilled. Well, I love it. I love that it's a way to strategically target that area. Cause I know that's another one of those areas that people get concerned about and it just really is difficult for them and, it, it, and to be able to do something like this is really awesome. So what would you say, I know you kind of mentioned there was like three different types of patients, but uh, how does the treatment look? Like typically how many times would you need to come in? Um, tell me a little bit more about that. Well, um, usually I do twice and then I just sit tight and, and wait and see um, because this is another product that months later is when you really see the results you can in fact you can be even more swollen for the first uh, month you have some bruises you get well that's, that's a good these are all good pictures um you can be more swollen for the first month and this product this uh deoxycholic acid actually dissolves the fat and it takes a while for that for that to dissolve and, and the debris to be carried away um so you don't want to overdo it but see this person um you, you don't have any idea how old this person is huh I do not, unfortunately. See, that's only that's only two vials. I, I mean, I think somebody who has a big, thick neck could use more than two vials, but most of my pictures have been two vials. So this is that's a great result there. You got that, you know, the definition of the. I love that. There's no. No, you don't have to. <laughs> there's no. The thing that's awesome to know about this though is that there's no surgery involved. This was just a quick injection in the office, and like you said, there's a little bit of swelling afterward and some bruising, but you know, no pain, no gain. Um, but these results are fantastic. So something definitely. No, you know what? Not only that, it's permanent. This oh, is not. Yes. This is this is not a bottle a year to maintain. This is permanent. You know. I've got to love that. Got to love that. Mm -hmm. um, well, Dr. Meyer, I'm going to let you go because I know you've got a lot of stuff to do, but I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us about some hot topics in uh, dermatology and uh, your fave sculpture. So thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Pleasure.